Hi there, this is Dave and welcome to the top 10 best puzzle based JRPGs. Puzzles and RPGs just kind of go together like peanut butter and jelly. Sometimes the puzzles are just little one off rooms that you'll find in dungeons, but personally, I like it whenever puzzles are seamlessly incorporated into all of the towns and the dungeons. When the whole world is your puzzle. And that's pretty much what we're going to be looking at today. The RPGs that best incorporate this wonderful aspect into their games. So, let's go ahead and get started. Number 10, the Pokemon series, released for multiple Nintendo systems. This probably isn't exactly the first series that comes to mind whenever you think of a puzzle-based RPG, but if you put your mind to it, you can actually really see how it incorporated those puzzles into its world. Rather than shooting arrows, pushing blocks, or hitting switches, here the puzzles instead involve capturing the correct Pokemon and using their abilities as well as HM machines to be able to progress. You might hit some roadblocks here and there if you don't have one with Flash, Fly, or Swim, so this definitely qualifies as a puzzle RPG. And with as much flack as I've given the series over the years, I can give credit where credit is due, and whenever a game does something in a unique way, I like that. Number 9, Breath of Fire 4, released for the PlayStation. This series started out on the SNES, and the first two entries really didn't focus that much on puzzle solving at all, and the third instead switched their focus to minigames. However, the fourth entry took those minigames and they rode with it, but they also added their fair share of puzzles along the way. Each party member has a field skill that they can use from chopping down trees, bashing barrels, hovering, and shooting guns to navigate your way through the towns and the dungeons. And there are puzzles and minigames scattered all over the place, and they're kind of combined into like one thing. Whether you have to capture a boar, cross across a swamp on the back of a snake, rescue a shrunken Nina, or capture a bandit, there is tons of different things to do here, which I can appreciate, even if it does make the game drag just a tad. Number 8, the Valkyrie Profile series, released for the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. The first two games of this series were nothing short of fantastic. They are definitely a jewel in Enix's crown, showcasing some of the inventive, off-kilter, and unique games that they were so well known for back in the SNES era. But as they say, they don't make games like they used to anymore. Except they do! A third game in the series has been announced recently! Woohoo! But back to the puzzles. You navigate these two games in a side-scrolling, 2D kind of Metroidvania fashion, but you have to utilize your magical powers to freeze enemies, bust down walls, open up chests, find keys, and solve puzzles to make your way through the various stages, recruiting Ihan jars, and sending souls up to fight for Odin. Number 7, the Heaven and Earth Trilogy, released for the SNES. For those of you unaware, this is a trilogy created by Quintet, and it consists of Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, and Terra Enigma. And if there was ever a series deserving of a bundled remastered port, or true continuation, it is this one! And while the first entry, Soul Blazer, is a bit light on the puzzles, the next two games definitely make up for that. In Illusion of Gaia, Will must use his flute, magical songs, and telekinetic powers, as well as the Knight Freedance abilities, to pass through real as well as mythological locations. In Terra Enigma, Ark sets off to save his town by utilizing his spear and acrobatic techniques to restore the lost continents of the world, and then repopulate the barren Earth. Number 6, Brain Lord, released for the SNES. Oh my god. Whenever I think of puzzles, this is probably the first game that comes to my mind. I mean, just look at the title. I remember reading the Nintendo Power Spread back in the day, and they made it seem like this was going to be like the hardest game imaginable. And for 11-year-old me, it probably was. The focus is on dungeon exploration, and they're filled to the brim with puzzles and you can have up to two different jades or magical elemental creatures which will help you solve those puzzles. Then there's tons of different weapons too that will help you solve all the puzzles involving the traps, moving floors, switches, pitfalls, and just hard as balls enemies. But damn if this game is not rewarding. Number 5, The Wild Arms series, released on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. This entire series lives and breathes on puzzles, but especially the first three entries which I'm going to show here. They all take place in the Wild West themed world of Filgaia, 
and I feel like the first three games focused more on puzzles, whereas the last two instead focused more on the extremely fun and innovative battle system. Each party member receives various tools that they can use to traverse those dungeons, from bombs, to skates, to magical pendants, to lighters, hookshots, guitars, and magical wands. It's a really great and creative system, and I wish that more RPGs took a cue from it because of just the sheer amount of tools that you can use both inside and outside of the dungeons, and it really does make this series go above and beyond. Number 4. Crosscode, released for multiple systems. A lot of indie RPGs don't really focus on puzzles. It seems like they would rather try to tell you some depressing slit your wrist story, or try to make you hate life by creating the hardest game imaginable. So whenever I find something fun and unique in the indie scene, I have to celebrate it. And that's what you have here in CrossCode. You play as a Sphero-mancer, who can fire orbs to hit switches from afar, and even bounce them off walls to hit your targets. And that's in the puzzle rooms. But even out in the open fields, the platformer creates puzzles of their own, with all the different elevations and treasures scattered throughout that you can play around with. Each screen is a brain teaser in and of itself as you figure out how that you're going to go about obtaining each item or finding the different exits. This indie action RPG is a refreshing take on the genre. Number 3, Alundra, released for the PlayStation. There are puzzle RPGs, and then there's Alundra. When I first picked up this game, I thought, oh, it's probably going to be like Landstalker meets Zelda. Maybe it's going to have a fun Ease or Terranigma flair. But what I found instead was one of the absolute hardest games I have ever played, with rage-inducing puzzles and combat. Yet, for whatever reason, I just couldn't put it down. This is the dark souls of puzzle games, where you have the special power to enter people's dreams and solve their problems. Kind of similar to Soul Blazer, but the puzzles here are so intensive and so punishing and so devious that you'll be tempted to fling the damn disc out the window. But then five minutes later, you'll be running out to get it because Alundra is just that good. Number 2. The Golden Sun series, released for the Game Boy Advance. Here we have two fantastic games, both utilizing puzzles to their fullest extent. Originally planned to be one large game, it had to split into two because of the sheer size, scope, and scale of it. And if there ever was a series that deserved to move from a portable onto the consoles, it's this one. A full remake from the ground up with both games seamlessly combined along with an end game where you could revisit the places from the first game would be sweet. The shtick here is that you utilize your synergy or magic to solve puzzles both in and out of the dungeons. You can manipulate the environment in so many different ways. To say that it was groundbreaking whenever it first came out is an understatement. It's just too bad that the third game doesn't exist. And number one, Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals, released for the SNES. This is the great granddaddy of puzzle RPGs, which is quite a shock to think about since it did come out so late in the SNES's life cycle back in 1996. You would think that there would have been an older RPG that really incorporated puzzles the way that Lufia 2 did, but there really wasn't. I mean, I can think of some RPGs that had puzzles, but nothing like this, where they're so seamlessly incorporated into the design. Similar to Wild Arms, you're given tools to explore which work in two ways. First, to manipulate enemy movement, and secondly, to use them to bust down walls with bombs, slice vines with swords, burn vegetation with fire arrows, and hookshot across the room. Just about every single area has something different to do, whether it's matching blocks, finding hidden doors, busting pillars to collapse floors, or hitting musical notes in the right order. This set the standard back in 1996, and it has unfortunately yet to be surpassed. Well, that's it for the top 10 best puzzle-based JRPGs. What are your favorite puzzle RPGs? Let me know in the comments. And if you like what I do here on the channel, please consider joining me over on Patreon for early access to my videos, coming on over to Discord to chat and hang out, or joining the Twitch for some wacky streaming fun. The link to them all can be found in the video description as well as the comments. I do hope to see you there. And as always, if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.